Hello, and welcome to this training session from Microchip. This video will introduce you to the DSPIC33CH family of Dual Core Digital Signal Controllers, or DSCs. Looking at the block diagram of the DSPIC33CH128 MP508, there are two DSPIC cores, a master and a slave core, in a single chip. These cores are loosely coupled with their own dedicated resources, which means both the cores can operate autonomously. The cores are asymmetric in performance with the master core operating at a maximum of 90 MIPS and the slave operating at 100 MIPS. Each core has its own program and data memory and peripheral bus with a dedicated set of peripherals. The main difference is that the master executes from 128 K bytes of program flash with error correction code or ECC. The slave core executes from program RAM with ECC. Executing from program RAM enables the slave core to run at a higher frequency. Master cores flash will contain the master core code as well as the slave code. During the boot time, the master will transfer or copy the slave code image from its program flash into the slave core's program RAM and then enable the slave core to start execution. After this, the slave core can run independent of the master core. The slave core in the DSPIC33CH family can be dedicated to executing time critical control code while the master core is busy executing user interface, system monitoring, and communication functions. The device features multiple debug ports. There are debug ports assigned for master as well for slave. This allows simultaneous debug of both cores. The output function of the I.O. ports can be assigned to either master core or slave core. By default, the master owns the I.O. ports at startup and the master can assign the output function of a required pin to the slave core. Most of the external pins available on the DSC can be assigned to either of the cores to enable flexible allocation per an application's requirements. There are several ways for the two cores to communicate with each other. The interprocessor communication can be realized using mailboxes and FIFOs. The mailbox and FIFO mechanisms can be polled or interrupt driven. A write operation to the mailbox can be configured such that the receiving core gets an interrupt. This can be used to indicate that a message is waiting. Similarly, the FIFO can be configured to interrupt when it is full or empty and various other conditions. This helps to implement a communication between the master and slave core with a very low software overhead. The mailbox mechanism is suited for critical and small amount of data while the FIFO is better suited for transferring large amounts due to 32-word buffer depth. For example, an application can use the slave core to control a motor almost independently, with minimal communication with the master core. On the other extreme, a safety-critical application can use the two cores to check each other frequently to detect any anomalies in the system. The flexibility enables applications to implement either an extreme level of cross-checking between the cores or minimal communication using the processor communication interface. Now let's introduce you to system events in a dual core architecture. Events can be either chip-wide or localized to a core. For example, each core has a dead man timer, which is similar to a watchdog timer, but with more advanced features. A dead man timeout can be configured to reset its own core. However, events like BOR, brownout reset, POR, power on reset, and master clear are chip wide events where both cores will reset. A dual core DS pick offers increased performance compared to a single core in an application. One of the cores can be dedicated for control loop execution to optimize responsiveness. A dual core enables the software design for an application to be partitioned between the cores in a way to allow independent development and seamless integration. The DSPIC C core maintains a familiar program model with all of the other DSPIC family of digital signal controllers. The master core has several dedicated peripherals and features. The master has more communication interfaces than the slave core. The master core is equipped with a CANFD controller, 
and other serial interfaces. The master core also has the peripheral trigger generator, configurable logic cells, and many other peripherals. This makes the master core better for communication or system monitoring tasks. In contrast, the slave core features some communication peripherals, but is more equipped with peripherals such as high-speed A to Ds, more PWM generators, and analog comparators. This makes the slave core better for running tight, closed-loop feedback and control algorithms for motor control or digital powertrain. There are a few exceptions to the concept of dedicated peripherals associated with each core. For example, the programmable gain amplifiers are associated with the slave core, but their output signals can be configured to be inputs of the analog comparators and A to Ds of either the master or the slave core. This enables sharing of the PGAs. Like our other DSPICs, the dual core family of DSPICs features the peripheral pin select or PPS capability, allowing each core to select the peripheral signal connection to the external IO pins. Additionally, the dual core devices have another layer of muxing called the pin ownership mux. This allows the user to assign a particular physical pin ownership to either of the cores. The dual core family with DSPIC33C cores offers extended functionality over the previous generation of DSPICs. There are now five sets of status and accumulator registers that facilitate faster interrupt switching. The status and accumulator register are selected in hardware based on the interrupt priority level of the core. This reduces the time required for getting into and out of an interrupt service routine and reduces the overall switching latency. This can enable compensator routines to achieve 50% faster execution. The C core also has new instructions that accelerate DSP performance, like a new instruction to clamp the register value to low or a high value in a single cycle, or a 32-bit load to store in the accumulators, accumulator normalization with min and max limit instructions, and a new faster divide instruction and an embed bit field instruction. All of these new features and higher execution speed of the C core will further accelerate your application's performance. For example, with these enhancements, you can now control multiple motors at 100,000 RPM. Let's consider a three pole three zero compensator algorithm, which is typically used in the tight closed loop control of digital power applications. The compensator algorithm can now be executed in 280 nanoseconds. This is nearly twice the performance of our previous generation and enables implementing faster control algorithms. Fast control algorithms are essential for digital power applications using gallium nitride and silicon carbide power switches to achieve fast transient response. The DSPIC dual core controller has many use cases in digital power, motor control, and other high-performance embedded applications. The firmware for real-time functions in an application are typically written in assembly level code to meet the time-critical responsiveness. It's ideal to dedicate the slave core for such real-time closed-loop functions. The firmware for the master core can be written in a higher-level language, such as C, to implement system monitoring, housekeeping, and communication functions. For example, in a digital power application, the slave can run tight control loop and compensator algorithm, while the master implements the PM bus communication and other system level functions. Or in a motor control application, the slave can execute the speed and torque control, while the master is used to add functional safety and CANFD communication. Similarly, a high-performance application can use the slave for some math-intensive filtering of sensor signals, and the master can undertake reliability and fault tolerance functions. The dual-core architecture adds more flexibility to the development process. It facilitates independent code development for each core by separate design teams that may be separated geographically. It later enables seamless integration when that code's brought together into a single chip. One team can focus on an area like motor control, 
and another team can focus on implementing housekeeping and communication functions. Separating the two cores facilitates optimization of code independently. A core executing a function can be independently debugged as there's minimal interaction between the two cores. Each core having its own dedicated resources and debug interface will further simplify the debugging and integration process. The dual core devices also support live update, enabling real-time firmware updates. This feature is particularly important for high availability applications such as server power supplies, where the controller needs to be updated in real time without taking the server network down. So with a dual core controller, you can design separately and integrate seamlessly. Thank you for watching this short video introducing the dual core DSPIC digital signal controllers. For more resources, please visit microchip.com slash DSPIC33CH.